Why mess with assessment? This is a one school for all lecture by me, Andrew Thomas, at Estoril University College, which I would like my international students to watch by Thursday, the 5th of September 2024, when we next meet. So I say mess with. There has been a reform, and the reform is called Assessment for Learning. Some of the people who have really inspired this reform hate the phrase assessment for learning. Um, for our purposes, we're just interested in primarily formative assessment, which is to say not the exams that come at the end of the year that give you a grade that you have to live with the rest of your life, but the kind of assessment that happens whilst the learning is taking place. The idea behind it is that pupils need to know what pupils can and can't do, and pupils need to know what is good and bad so that they can accept and listen to um, feedback, but also so that when they know they're doing good things, they don't stop doing those good things so that they can change their practice and have control over their education themselves. And the reason we started doing this, the reason things became problematic, um, first of all, actually had, happened to do with pupil rights. So imagine you are asked to draw a cat, and if your cat looks like this, you have every reason to be extremely proud of it. But then you hand it in to your teacher, and your teacher marks you down and gives you a bad grade because it isn't in color, it's only a line drawing, it only has one eye, and it isn't wearing a hat. Now, you may have varying degrees of sympathy for these three uh, pieces of feedback, but surely the last one seems unreasonable. Why does it need to have a hat? Why do cats need to have a hat? Apart from the fact that these things rhyme, why can't I draw a cat without a hat? And the feeling of is, is of injustice. Because the teacher was going to assess you according to whether your cat had a hat, but didn't tell you that that was what they were going to do. And in reality, situations like this happen day in and day out in everyday education. That we don't, as teachers, always know exactly what it is that we want of our pupils. Very often it's only when you've got in 30 copies of an exam that you really understand what you really wanted out of that exam, what you really wanted them to do. And that's a problem for you because sometimes it's only when you've marked them five or six of them that you realize what it is that you wanted. But it's a bigger problem for the pupil because whilst the pupil thought that you were acting in good faith, in reality you were saying, gotcha, I have found a reason to mark, um, to mark you down. It's a problem. And so one of the things uh, we have done to replace this feeling of injustice is to work out assessment criteria to say that when I'm going to assess you, I will be assessing you on the following few points. Assessment for learning is about pupils understanding the same amount as their teachers concerning how they are going to be assessed. So that was one point, the feeling of injustice. The second one is that research has happened. Firstly, the famous black box, inside the black box, and a black box is, uh, is a standard philosophical experiment, and we use it to talk about um, a situation where we know what goes in and we know what comes out, but we don't know what happens within that. Um, and um, Black and Williams, in, in their article, Inside the Black Box, um, say that you can throw lots of money at schools, and it's really good when politicians decide to do that, but at the end of the day, you can't explain the lack of progress in our educational systems purely by lack of money. There are some things we can do which don't cost money. Essentially, instead of saying we will, set, we will put money into this thing, we'll say we'll do things with them, we'll structure it differently. And sometimes that will need money, sometimes that won't. But it's not just a case of education becomes good, good when you spend money on it. So that was their, their point with inside the black box. They said, let's open this box, see what happens within education, and see what works. It was quite a um, provocative uh, thing to say. And shortly after them, uh, we did open the black box in a much more dramatic way with uh, the famous work of John Hattie, Visible Learning, which combined 800 or summarized 800 meta-analyses, which is to say a fantastically large amount of research about what works in education. 
And what Hattie found was lots of things work and lots of things don't. But one of the most important and clearest results was that formative assessment is essential for learning. It is not purely that when we do assessment, we are finding out what the pupils have done. When we are doing assessment, we are not simply finding out how much they've learnt. We are taking part in that learning. Pupils learn from assessment and assessment isn't just assessment of learning. So how does it work? What is the nuts and bolts of this? Black and Williams say the following. Self-assessment by pupils, far from being a luxury, is in fact an essential component of formative assessment. When anyone is trying to learn, feedback about the effort has three elements. Recognition of the desired goal evidence about present position, and some understanding of a way to close the gap between the two. All three must be understood to some degree by anyone before he or she can take action to improve learning. So marking is no longer the teacher's secret. There is no gotcha effect. Pupils should know how they are being marked. It is not about niceness. It is not saying the, to the pupil they're good people. The work is at the centre of everything. And improvement is what teachers and pupils want. That is the assumption of all this. The idea is that if they can assess their work, then instead of just waiting to find out what the teacher says that they got as a grade, they can find out what they themselves think they, can, they, they got as a grade, and they can improve it themselves. And notice that all of this makes the line between teacher and learning somewhat blurred. Both pupils and teachers need to know what, te what pupils can do and what they can't do, and the quality of the work that they've just done. Both of these are extremely important. In, practical, in practice, this is all about humility, about offence, about learning to hear what we need to hear, and ownership of the educational journey, that teachers and pupils are on the same side. So we did the assessment for learning re revolution because there was a, a legal matter or a political matter of respecting pupil desires and pupil rights, but also because it reflected the best research that we had at the time about what works in edu education. Notice, just like special needs education, this is a matter of working up data about what pupils can and can't do, working up good descriptions of pupils so that we can use that when we are designing our education but also that it's an emphasis on the pupil's relationship to themselves, pupils learning to be humble and listening to feedback. Because at the end of the day, that's the kind of people I want to live with. That's the people I want to share my country with or my neighborhood with. That's the kind of citizens we want. People who can take criticism, people who, who we can talk to without them taking offense at every turn. That's the kind of people we want to be friends with in the future. We want friends, neighbours and other citizens who can live their best life. The big question is, do we really want to require this of our pupils on an everyday basis? I'll see you in class.